Hello back there teenagers, uh, praise the Lord. Today we have a special moment whereby we are having a panel of uh, your fellow teenagers. This is the Gospel Celebration Church teenagers. Remember, we have been talking about salvation for the past four weeks. So today we are going to discuss the same topic. We see how as a teenager we have been able to receive salvation, how we have been able to walk through the journey, because we say salvation is a journey. So we'll be having um, examples from our fellow teenagers to see how we have been able to walk through this journey, whether they are, we have challenges, how some of them received Christ, what made them to receive Jesus, and uh, how the journey has been. But before that, I want us to make a, a prayer, then we proceed. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we worship you this great evening. We thank you because of the moment and the time that Lord you have given unto us to come and discuss more about your world, Jesus. Lord, we pray for your presence in our ministry, to God. We pray that, my God, you may accompany us, O God. Let us have your fellowship, Jesus. And Lord, even as we discuss more about salvation, O God. Lord, we thank you because the topic shall impact a teenager who is at home. And Lord, even as we learn uh, from uh, uh, live examples from uh, our teenagers, O God, help us, O God, to impact a teenager who is our father. And let them be helped in this journey. Father, we thank you and we bless your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and we give thanks. Amen. Again, we thank you, the church. We appreciate the church leadership for giving us an opportunity. We come and teach to the, the teenagers. Uh, we say thank you because you are giving us an opportunity to grow. To grow our talents and to serve in the kingdom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, I want us to continue by requesting our teenagers to give an introduction, to introduce themselves, and tell us their names, and who they are, and where they fellowship. So we'll start on uh, from my side of left. we start from Mike. Thank you. Yeah, praise God. My name is Victor, and um, I'm a teenager in this church, Gospel Celebration Church, and I'm a born again Christian, and I'm glad to be here. Praise God. Praise God again. My name is David. I'm a teenager at GCC Kayole, and I love serving God. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Praise God once more. Amen. My name is Vlin Kavoda Mulewa. I'm born again. I'm a child of God. I fellowship in this church, Gospel Celebration Church, and um, it's a pleasure to be here. Yeah. Um, my name is Joel Kathambi, and I'm a teenager in GCC Kayole, and I serve here, and I thank God that I'll be here, and I'm a born-again Christian. Praise God. My name is Isaac Momo. Uh, I'm a born-again Christian, part of the GCC Teenagers class. Thank you. Wow. That's a great introduction. These are the sons and the daughters of this uh, kingdom and uh, of this church. We are under Pastor Apostle Patrick Murithi, and we thank God for the chance he has given us to be that is anointing. So we are going to start discussing the topic on salvation. And I want to start by asking one of us, Mike or Victor, to explain to us what salvation is and give us a simple illustration of what salvation is. And maybe you can tell us how we received Jesus. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Chair Joseph. According to me, um, salvation is being saved from sin and its consequences or dangers. When I say dangers, I mean, you know, when in Genesis, we can see that Adam and Eve, they ate the forbidden fruit, they sinned. So there were some consequences that they were to face. And these consequences, there were many, I can say first of all, that God loves us. In John 3.16, we can see because of the love that God showed us, that he sent his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish. So God sent his son, so that we may be redeemed, and, f and we may be saved from sin. So according to me, that's the definition of salvation. So we say that salvation is uh, when you are washed away from the sins. You are saved from that danger. Okay? Everybody got into the danger of uh, misfortune, sickness came, all those things. Eh? But when Christ came, just like Micah said, that uh, in John 3, 16, God loved the world so much. So it is from the love of God for mankind that the human being and to redeem, be redeemed back. The fellowship that God had with man was broken. Okay? 
So God had to send his only son, Jesus Christ, to come and bring us back to his fellowship. So just as Micah said that uh, we all got into that danger. And somebody who had the ability to come and save us from the sins had to be sent. And that person was Jesus Christ. So thank you, Mike, for that great answer. How did you receive salvation, Mike? Okay, me, me, I received salvation. It was in 2015. There was an apostolic conference in this church, Gospel Celebration Church. And I remember it was when Apostle Chipaya, he was, a, he was the guest minister, was preaching. He asked that if one wants to be saved, he can come in front and he will be prayed for. So I took that chance and I got saved. Was it easy for you to receive Jesus when uh, Apostle Chipaya saying that somebody wants to receive Jesus to come in front? Was it easy? Did it just come automatically? I can say it was not easy first because I had the fear of what will people say and uh, what will they see me as because you know when you get saved there are other people who look at you that you are you are now you're getting saved and you are a sinner. It was a decision I made so I took I took my chance because there was I believe that there could be no other chance that I can take apart from that. I decided it and I went in front and he prayed for me. And now I'm saved. It's a big challenge to so many teenagers. When uh, you feel like Christ or the Holy Spirit is conflicting you to come and receive Jesus. When you're being called to come and receive Christ. I know there are some voices that tells you, don't go. Another voice is, tells you, go and make that decision. Take a step. But to many teenagers, they just ask themselves, what will my peers say? So they fear and they end up not receiving Jesus. And we're saying that salvation is a gift, a gift that every person should decide to receive, okay? So as a teenager, never, ever allow fear, okay? To take away the chance, that chance, the chance that Christ has given unto you. Come and receive him, okay? Never ask yourself, what will my teenagers or what will my peers say? Remember, salvation is so personal. It's up to you to decide. Make a decision today. Make a decision now as a teenager, to overcome the fears that are coming, the voices that are speaking to you, telling you not to receive Jesus, right? Just like Mike did, he overcame the fear. Remember, fear is not of God, it is of the devil. And remember, the devil would want so much of you to remain in his path, okay? On his side. But Christ is telling you, come my son, I need you in my, on my side. But when the devil speaks to you, and he says, Remember you are a teenager? What will the teenagers say? That's the voice of the enemy. And God does not want that voice. So thank you, Mike, for that great uh, explanation. God bless you. Amen. My prayer is that you remain in salvation. Amen. That you keep the game. Amen. Okay? And fight for it. Amen. Don't compromise. Protect the great gift. Yes. It's a great gift that Christ gave unto us all. Yes. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. So um, we also saying that... Uh, Salvation has got its own formula. It has the steps that uh, you, you go through so that you can receive Jesus. And uh, in our panel, I want to ask uh, one of us, who is uh, Isaac, just explain to us whether this salvation just come like that, whether it has a formula, just like mathematics, we all have a formula to getting, of getting something. So. Salvation also has uh, its own formula. So I'll ask one of us, um, Isaac, to just explain that in a short while. Thank you. Thank you. So for us to, do, to talk, to discuss about steps of salvation, we'll have to, to, we'll have to read the, the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 9. David, please. Thank you, Isaac. I'll read a scripture from the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 9. It says, if you confess that Jesus is Lord and believe that God raised him from death, you will be saved. Thank you very much. So, one thing in the steps of salvation, just like teacher said in mathematics, that there is a there's fo there's a formula for each and everything. In salvation, there's also a w there's a way that someone gets saved. Number one is acceptance. Acceptance is brought about by hearing the word of God and the conviction coming unto you. Because in acceptance, you hear the word being preached, then you get the conviction from the Holy Spirit, and then accept. 
uh, you accept that you are a sinner and you are born a sinner and then number two you believe in your heart that Christ died and resurrected for our sins one thing is that what, whatever you believe in becomes you anything that happens in your life anything that you have had when uh, once you believe it it becomes part of you number three confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior after believing in your heart whatever you confess whatever you tell people out there that uh, you believe that you are a winner and everything and you confess it it becomes part of you so it's a, in, the, in that way when you confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, is Lord and Savior in your life it has become part of you thank you thank you Isaac but do you confess Christ yourself yes I do to who mostly in school uh-huh. to one way it's it's a, it's a way to to create a distinction between you and the other person and to it you know by just confessing that J Christ is Lord and saving your life it speaks volumes about you to people when uh, you've met for the first time yes at by the to all teenagers eh? uh it is very important you see the the reason as to we say you confess it you speak it to people let people know that you're born again at the moment people know that you're born again there are some things that they will not call you to do or there are some things that they will not uh, uh, influence you towards them okay they will always respect you because you have said that i have received christ they respect you because you have said i am born again okay so it is very important as a teenager to always confess that i am born again just say it speak it to people tell people that you're born again the moment you confess that you have received Jesus you're born again there are some friends who will not come to you there are some behaviors that you people will not entertain with you there are some uh, things that people will not tell you let's go and do because they know that there is there is a stand that you have confessed that you have and people will respect you because of that so as a teenager we encourage you always confess Jesus tell people that you're born again in school tell people that you're born again in uh, the place that you are, where you are residing tell people that you're born again confess christ wherever you go let people distinguish you because of that because christ has, uh, should always reflect in your life okay as a teenager even to us as uh, in this panel eh, let us make it an habit that we confess christ wherever we go we confess that we are born again in school let us confess jesus right and that that will protect us from so many things right so thank you uh, Isaac for that uh, short explanation and uh, we thank God for that okay so uh, after receiving Jesus we say it is a journey okay it's a journey that we need to walk all of us all of us it's a journey that we need to walk and this journey is not easy I know uh, to many teenagers receiving Jesus even walking with the Bible actually on the street is not easy. Accepting just like Mike saying that when he, were, he wanted to receive Jesus, it was not easy to make a step to go forward and receive Christ. So it is a, a, it's a challenging journey for the teenagers. So I want us to discuss and get an example from uh, some of us, eh? some of our, our teenagers, how they have been able to walk throughout the journey, what has helped them to walk through the journey and uh, we see whether we can help one another in this because we say an iron sharpens an iron. Okay? Yeah. There are some um, challenges you could be facing, and you're not the only person. We have our fellow teenagers in our panel. They can help us tell us how they have been able to overcome. And maybe they can help us to know how we can be able to get, just be like them, and walk in this journey. Because it's a journey uh, that we need to work with. It's a beautiful journey. And personally, I'm so proud of my salvation a great gift that uh, I'm so happy I've seen results of it and uh, I would encourage all of us as teenagers that we walk through this journey but before that let us get some experience from um, part of us and we proceed so we are going to start with uh, my sister Jewel she will be explaining us to us how we've been able to walk throughout this journey thank you Jewel welcome uh, thank you, teacher, for giving me this chance. Um, staying in salvation has not been easy, especially being a teenager. You, at this time, you know, your fellow peers are 
saying that this is the latest thing, do it. But not everything that is latest is good. So standing in Christ is is a journey that I've been working for the past few years. I gave my life to Jesus in a certain Bible camp. Sometimes you feel that I, I just I go to church, I do this, I do that, so I might be in Christ. But when they say that salvation is personal, you cannot go to heaven without it. I decided that I will do this and I will I will stand by it. Ever since you made that decision that I'll be born again, it's it's something that came from you, not someone else pushed you to do it. So that self motivation ever since that day must continue on. Like Paul said, I will press towards the mo- the high calling. So continue pushing until you've reached your goal. You must also read the word of God. You know, when you read the word of God, you feel like God is speaking to you. Even when we read Second Timothy chapter three verse sixteen, it says that every scripture in the in the Bible, God is speaking to you. When you read the word of God, don't see it just like just the word that Paul wrote. See it as God speaking to you. Take it personally and implement it also. Also, when you read the word of God, also pray about it. When you pray, you have that connection with God. You say we say that prayer is communicating with God. So you know, communicating is sending a message and getting feedback so when you talk to god he will respond and when you have that personal connection with god you'll grow spiritually and also don't see god as someone that you can't even reach see god as that person that friend of yours so when you ever have a problem you say that god today has been like this I know that it's been tough, but just be with me, hold my hand. And when you continue like that, it will empower you. Even we see in, in the book of Timothy how Paul used to advise Timothy. When you read that, don't take it as uh, it's just Timothy was being told. Just see it as Paul himself is writing to you. Just don't take it casually. So is it possible for us to hear from the book of Timothy what the scripture says? Maybe Dave can lead for us. We hear the scripture, what the scripture says in the book. Thank you, Joel. I'm going to read from the book of Second Timothy, chapter three, verse sixteen. It says, "All scripture is inspired by God and is useful for teaching the truth, rebuking error, correcting faults, and giving instruction for right living." Wow. So we have found some of the things that the scripture does. Eh? Joel has said that uh, when you read the Word of God, you you feel like. God is speaking to you. Remember the word of God is God himself, right? So when you read the word, it is God who speaks to you. Then uh, from the scripture that Dave has just read, eh, that the word of God is inspired. It is used for rebuking. So there are some things that you do as a Christian. Eh? When you read the word of God, it tells you this is right, this is not right. It is the constitution of uh, all Christians. Eh? So the Bible is a constitution that we all need to use. We all need to read it. So it is very important, just like Joel has said, that we use the word of God. The word of God helps us to maintain or to walk throughout this journey. Because from the word, we receive instructions. We get rebuked from the word of God. When you want to do something that is not in accordance with the word of God, the word itself rebukes you. Okay? The word of God corrects you. Right? So as a teenager, you need to make the, the Bible your friend. Right? Make it your friend. And Joel is just saying that we, we, when we are addressing Christ or when we are talking to God, we talk to God just like we, you can talk to a friend. Because God is a friend to all of us. God loves us all. God loves you as a teenager, right? So when you are addressing God, just address God as a friend. Just make the way you can speak to a friend, speak to God like that. Tell God, God, this is my challenge. This is what I'm passing through. This is what I need from you. Just like a friend. And God is so, so merciful now. God is so um, ready for you. To listen to your prayer, to listen to you, and answer you, and give you the right way to work with. Right? So make the Bible or the word of God as your friend. When you read the word of God, see you are talking to God. See God talking to you. Follow that instruction. Then the word of God says, that we become the doers of the word. Okay? Let us not just be people who read the word. Okay? Let us become those doers of that word. The doers of the word. That is what we are being encouraged to do. Okay? 
The moment you lean the words, do. Act on it. Okay? Do the words. And also, as I told you earlier, being a teenager during this era is not easy. When I was reading a book Solomon wrote, he said there's nothing new under the sun. When they say that this is this is latest, just say there's nothing. It's just something that maybe was then and they've just upgraded it to here now. Don't allow the pressure from your peers to affect you. Just read the word of God and you'll overcome it. Just like Joel has said that as a teenager there are so many challenges. Remember we don't belong to this world. The world has got its own pattern. The world wants to attract you on its, uh, on its side. But there is an expectation that God wants us to have. Okay? We do things that please Christ. Things that are conforming to one's country things. We don't conform to the world. Yeah. We conform to what is God. So we, it is our call, it is our responsibility as Christians, as teenagers, to do things that are godly. Music that is godly, okay? Movies that are godly, right? Things that are not of the world. Thank you, Jewel, for that. You're welcome. Wow. So, um, still on the same issue of uh, maintaining our salvation, I've seen uh, Evarine working in church. She has been serving here for a long time. And uh, we are happy that she has served with us. She has grown here. So I'll ask Evarine maybe to tell a certain teenager how service has helped her to be able to maintain her salvation. So Evarine, service for kingdom and for me, service has helped sana because when you serve God, there's some things that they will not attack you. For example, you're in Christ Jesus and uh, he promised to help you. So when you serve God, you sacrifice yourself to serve him. In any way, uh, he will help you. I've served God for more than four years. So to maintain my salvation service, he means idea sana. So there is no small service in church. Evarin has been working in the department of decoration. And uh, when you beautify the church, God beautifies your life. Okay? Yeah. When you serve God, God serves you. When you serve people, you serve God. Right? Yes. So never despise any ritual service that you do in the kingdom. As a teenager, find a priest that you can do in church. I believe all of us serve somewhere in church. Yeah. yeah. We all serve in a, we are in certain department church. Yes. Yeah. So even to encourage our fellow teenagers, please get somewhere. Even if it's screening the, the floor. Okay? There is yeah. nothing that is too ritual in the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is so big for us. Eh? It yeah. can accommodate all of us. Okay? So yeah. come, come to church. Get a place where you can serve. And there is always a reward in that. Apostle has been teaching about kingdom service. And we are seeing the benefits. There is a book that Apostle has written. Mm -hmm. Called to serve. Okay? Yeah. It has got all the instructions. It has got all the things that we need to do. Okay? Yeah. The benefits of service. It is so rewarding. It is the best paying job in the kingdom, okay? As so yeah. a teenager, find a place in the kingdom of God to serve, okay? So uh, maybe, Mike, you, you want to add something on that? Yeah. Yes, please. I believe that once you are saved, you have to have personal habits that will help you grow in salvation. In everything that you do, keep God first. Thank you, Mike, for that addition. Maybe, Evelyn, you can add something on that? Yeah. In service, there is a lot of challenges, of course. You have to overcome them by reading the word of God, the same as Jewel has said. Whatever people say about you, don't concentrate on it. Please make sure during your service, you sacrifice yourself too. Because when you, sa you give yourself first so that you can give your work to God. Thank you, Evarin. That's uh, important. That we need to of ourselves as a living sacrifice. Just like Romans 12 says, that we offer ourselves as living sacrifice. Remember, yeah. we serve God uh, with sacrifice. So we need to give ourselves to the kingdom of God, the work of the kingdom. And that way, we get a great reward. Right? Yeah. yeah. The moment you receive the gift of salvation, we need to maintain that gift. Because you can easily lose it. Okay? You can lose the gift if you don't take care of that. Okay? 
So salvation is a gift and we need to take care of it. Okay? So uh, Bishop can add something on that then uh, as we conclude. Thank you. I wanted to say that we should conduct ourselves in a manner that complements Christ in our lives according to Philippians chapter 1 verse 27. So in everything that we do, wherever we are, whatever we do, whatever even we think, it should reflect Christ in our lives. It should reflect that we are saved, we, co we, 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 were, we have been separated from the rest of our peers and even our colleagues at, in every place we are. Yeah, that was all I wanted to say. So you are saying that uh, even as we speak, your speech should imitate Christ. Yes. Your behavior should be Christ-like. Yes. Even your mind. Yes. So that's, we be, that's why we say that we become renewed in our mind. Yes. Right? Yes. So we must be like Christ. Yes. Wow. That's, uh, that's a great uh, point that in everything that you do, ask yourself, am I imitating Christ? Is it Christ-like? So as a teenager, it's your opportunity, it's, uh, it's your responsibility that everything that you do, make sure that it is Christ-like, okay? So having said that, we want to conclude our um, discussion today. We continue next week with part two. And, um, hoping that you'll be there for us, watch us, and uh, you can share our, 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 our preachings today through our YouTube channel, Gospel Celebration Church, Kayore. And also you can follow us on Facebook, GCC Kayore. Then on Instagram, GCC underscore Kayore. Share our information there. Like our preachings there, share them, and we shall appreciate. And God bless you. Shalom. Jesus, you may be lifted, for there is none like you. You are holy and you are great. And we declare this.